What is that, Dr. Hong? Yeah! Welcome to What's That, Dr. Hong? A place for good old-fashioned FYI medical information. Today we're going to be talking about a disfiguring acute illness called Bell's Palsy. What is Bell's Palsy? It is a condition where half the face, either the right side or the left side, is going to be paralyzed. We're not really sure what causes it, but it seems to be related to an infection, probably from herpes zoster, otherwise known as shingles, it's a type of herpes virus, or maybe even tick bites or other viruses, including influenza. In a population of 100,000 people, like here in Cape May County, about 13 to 34 people every year will get Bell's palsy. Kind of scary. There seems to be no difference between people of age or race or gender or where they live for getting or not getting Bell's palsy. The people most at risk though seem to be diabetics. Five to 10% of cases of Bell's palsy are actually diabetic people. And also pregnant women in their last trimester or after giving birth seem to be three times more at risk for getting Bell's palsy. It mimics a stroke. It occurs acutely over three hours and suddenly a person's face will suddenly, one side will collapse. It's like a stroke. But the rest of the body isn't evolved. Just the face and the head. One of my patients graciously agreed to let me take some pictures so that others could learn about Bell's palsy. He suffered Bell's palsy on the right side of his face. You can see the right corner of his mouth is drooping. And also right there, you can see the crease, which is normally there, is all drooped down. The right cheek is drooping down. Therefore, smiling can become impossible. There you can see the right side is down while the left side is working. Also, raising the eyebrow up is very difficult. So the left side goes up just fine, but you can see there are no crinkles on the right side of his forehead because the muscles are paralyzed. So while he can't raise his right eyebrow up, ironically he can't close his right eye either. This can lead to dry eyes and even ulcerations of the cornea. Also, other things that affect the mouth, the taste can be distorted or you lose some of your taste completely. And also the salivary glands don't work as well so a dry mouth can occur. Also the ear can really hurt. Loud sounds can make it very painful, but also some people, they just complain about this constant nagging in their ear. The psychological impact can be quite devastating. A person relies on their face, and when someone's disfigured, some people won't even leave the house or go to work because it's so devastating. It's something I definitely fear. Of course, everyone who has Bell's palsy wants to know what their prognosis is. In general, almost everyone has some recovery within three weeks. For people who have mild disease, they're probably going to fully recover. People who have moderate disease, full recovery usually will happen, but it might take longer, up to six months. People who have severe problems at the very onset might not get full recovery. What is synkinesis? It's a rather unusual result of Bell's palsy because the cranial nerve seven, that's the facial nerve, starts to regenerate. It might not go back where everything is supposed to go. Things become disorganized, so to speak. So there are three things that can happen with this synchinesis. One is if a person blinks their eye or winks, the corner of the mouth might twitch and vice versa. If a person smiles, the eye might actually blink. And the last thing is from salivating too much, for example, you're eating something really yummy and your mouth is watering, that can actually cause the eyeball to start tearing up, which we call crocodile tears. Medicines might help reduce the severity of Bell's palsy, but unfortunately there is no cure. This has been Dr. John Hong for What's That, Dr. Hong? Thanks for tuning in and stay healthy.